Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we're back playing some Crash Landing for episode 24. Now, last episode, we made these two new machines over here, the Induction Smelter and the Magma Crucible. And since last episode, I have added the Fluid Transposer and the Energetic Infuser to the mix, and I am dying of thirst because I didn't put my Camel Pack on. Where is my Camel Pack? It is on the floor. Let's, let's put that back on real quick. Uh, so, yeah, I've added these two new machines, and I've hooked everything up using Leadstone Energy Conduits to our little survivalist generators over there, which could probably do with an upgrade because I think we're producing about a hundred redstone flick uh, redstone flux per tick um, max at the moment which to be honest is not really enough to power all of these machines so we should probably look uh, at upgrading that sometime soon but that's a that's that's a problem for another episode for now what I want to do is I want to tackle our storage problem we have a pretty big storage problem look at these chests they're just unorganized jumbled pieces of rubbish we have stuff scattered everywhere we've got a bunch of stuff in this chest we've got a bunch of barrels we've got some more barrels over there we've got some more chests holding rubbish over there and it's just a big flipping massive mess we've got an me chest here holding more stuff and it's just all unorganized it's unorganized there's nothing anywhere central specific where we can go and that is where applied energistics comes in i think it is about time we complete this quest down here this guy and we get ourselves an AE system so we need an me controller and an me drive which sounds fairly simple but because of just crash landing and the way it is it's not simple at all it's actually really flipping complex so to get an emmy controller we're going to need four fluix crystals these are fairly easy to get they are just nether quartz certus quartz and redstone i've been sifting through a bunch more soul sand since last episode so we have a bunch of nether quartz we've always had a bunch of certus quartz and i think we have about eight stacks of redstone so we're fine on all those fronts the iron we can do easily the hard part comes when we want to make an advanced processor because this guy requires silicon Fluxed Electron Blend and a PRC LX300 Logic Expansion Card. The silicon, easy enough. You can just cook nether quartz, uh, pulverized nether quartz, or you can... I can hear things. I don't like being able to hear things. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't explode on me. Don't you dare explode on me. Don't break. Please don't. There we go. There we go. There we go. Don't break now. Do not be breaking on me. Okay, okay, I think, I think we are safe. <laughs> okay, all right, that, that almost near explosion there should probably give you a little bit of an idea of what I've been doing since last episode. I have been building up uh, some pneumatic craft stuff. So we got a bunch of upgrades last episode that have allowed us to do some cool new things with pneumatic craft. We've got the, uh, the item life upgrade, which allows things to stay in the middle of this uh, chamber for an infinite amount of time without despawning, and the security upgrade, which I think was what kicked into place then to where it didn't blow up. It's sort of like... I don't know what it does exactly, but I think it stops it blowing up. It, it kind of gives you a bit more, a bit more leeway with stuff like that. But uh, back in terms of the um, the advanced uh, the advanced circuit here, the silicon is fairly easy. The flux electron blend is actually fairly easy as well. It is just destabilized redstone with some end electron blend. Electron blend. I've got uh, 32 electron ingots here. All we got to do is we head on over to a pulverizer, find a pulverizer near you. Throw that into there, and that will pulverize up into Electron Blend for us, which is very nice. So we'll get 32 Electron Blend from that. And if we come back and have a look over here, now that we have a Magma Crucible and Fluid Transposer directly next to each other, what we can do is we can grab the redstone we need. We can put it into the Magma Crucible. It will break it down into destabilized redstone and instantly transfer it over into the Fluid Transposer. And then all we got to do is grab some more of that um, Electron Blend that we made just a second ago. Throw it into the fluid transposer like so. And that will make us that flux electron blend that we wanted just a minute ago, which is pretty nice. Now, this toast is doing nothing for me, so I'm going to eat some uh, some spider ice soup because that sounds flipping delicious. So, uh, yeah, the, the flux electron blend, not too big of a deal. We can get that fairly easily. And as you can see, we're doing it here. So we kind of have already the, uh, the electron blend there to make this the only thing we're missing now is the prc lx 300 logic expansion card which is a bit more scary the plastic sheets we can do the printed circuit boards are a bit of a pain but we can do the trouble comes when we need fluxed electrum ingots because this thing is some fluxed electrum blend which is easy enough to get but with some pyrothium dust which is not too scary the, pu the pulverized coal is fairly easy to get which is pulverized you guessed it coal and we have redstone we have blaze powder the trouble is the sulfur at the minute we actually don't have any sulfur and I, from what i can see here the best way to get it is to go through through and actually pulver and actually sift through sand and try and get it through the one percent drop there 
So what I think I'm going to do between this episode and next is probably try and alter my little pulverization system over here and, and change it up a little bit so we start uh, sifting through sand just for a little while uh, whilst we get ourselves a nice stock up of sulfur so that in the future we can make ourselves some, uh, some pyrothium dust fairly easily. For now, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back into the quest book, try not to get killed by skeletons, and I'm going to go back to this guy here and claim for pyrothium dust as the reward because the rest of these we can probably get. Enderian blend is quite complex, but once now that we've got a mob spawner and pretty much infinite mob essence, we can set up a an enderman spawner wherever we want, which will work quite nicely to get us unlimited ender pearls. So I'm going to take this uh, this uh, this pyrothium dust. I'm going to claim my reward, and now we should. Theoretically, once we get ourselves enough PCBs, have everything we need to make the ME controller, which is pretty flipping cool. So, the problem arises when we need the rest of the stuff. <laughs> so, in order to make anything with applied energistics, thanks to crash landing, we need a bunch of these pneumatic craft PCBs. So, what I've done since last episode is I've been planting, harvesting, bone mealing a ton of the lightning plant seeds, the creeper plant seeds, and the squid plant seeds back there. And I have put them all through our pressure chamber, uh, along with some compressed iron, and we now have a bunch of stuff, which is pretty flipping cool. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to make ourselves a bunch more capacitors, a bunch more transistors, and then eventually a bunch more of the printed circuit boards, then put them through our little system over here. And we should, I think, if my calculations are correct, come out with about 19 um, printed circuit boards, which is pretty cool, because that means we can make this guy over here. This guy is going to use one, two, three which is quite nice, so that'll leave us with about 16, and then every other disc that we want to make, every other ME chest that we want to make, and any other maybe um, storage bus, so if we could put like storage buses on the back of here, so that we don't have to empty these barrels out, we just hook them up to our E system, and, uh, and if we do that, that means that with 16 extra, we could, look, we could hook up like a full line of these things, so we might hook up that middle line, I don't know yet, we do use quite a lot of that middle stuff, so I'm still thinking about that, but we, we've, it, having a lot of PCBs gives us a lot of playroom, it gives us a lot of stuff that we can do, so what we're going to do, we want to make some capacitors, and we don't want to sit here, break the thing up, and put them in, wait for it, and do it, and flip it, and wait all that time again, what we want to do is we want to just put all the things in, have them all combine up, and just come straight back out, and the way that we do that is using this guy at the top. Now, the problem that we had before with this thing... Can I grab that? No. <laughs> the problem that we had before with the pressure chamber interface there is that... Bef can I can I do this? No, can I flip in heck? The problem we had before with it is that the hopper only puts in one item at a time and the, the gate at the bottom was letting everything out as soon as it went through. So if we wanted to make, say, a capacitor, we'd put in the light blue plastic, we'd put in some redstone, and we'd put in some compressed iron, but it would just let each thing through one at a time and nothing would combine in the middle. So what we've got to do is we've got to go to the bottom here and where it says item filter on the right of this pressure chamber, we've got a whitelist. Uh, well, it doesn't say a whitelist specifically, but we're filtering out that we only want capacitors and transistors to come through this pipe here. That's all we want out. Do not let anything else through. And now what it's, now what it's going to do is it's going to keep putting items in, and as soon as a capacitor is made, it's going to let it through. So what we can do now is we can put an item duct here. We can make this an, I an output. We can use our server to have it actively pull out like so and we can throw in say a redstone a blue plastic sheet would be nice and some compressed iron and what should happen is everything should stay in there until it forms into the uh, the transistor or the capacitor that we need so let's you can see it all in there it's all gonna last forever it can wait as long as it wants now because we have the uh, the item life upgrade in there and if we just wait it should follow through. I can hear stuff happening, but I'm not sure if stuff is actually happening. Oh, stuff's gone. And if we look down in here, drum roll, do we have it? Maybe. Ta-da! We got ourselves a capacitor. Nice. So now, all we got to do is we can throw in pretty much like, uh, let's uh, grab all the stuff we need. We could grab like all of this, half of these, and a bunch of compressed iron, and a bunch of redstone. Uh, we could throw all of these into here like so. Boom, boom, boom. And what's going to happen is they're going to pull in all at a time because the item ducts can pull stacks of items. And that should pull the redstone any second now. <laughs> I'm hoping. I think it's just getting a bit backed up with the, the other items letting them through one at a time. There we go. Next one's in. We should see them all gather up in here. And then we should see them sort of like all pop into, uh, into capacitors as soon as that redstone gets dropped in. Maybe. There we go, redstone's in, 
Do we have enough pressure? We do not. See, now pressure has dropped dramatically there because we are trying to make a heck of a lot of stuff. So, let's grab some charcoal. I, block, blocks of charcoal do work quite nicely, but I'm kind of dubious about putting those in because... You can't. They last a very long time, which means if you get to a situation where you want to stop the machines running and you don't want it to keep going because it's going to blow up, if you have a block of charcoal in there, it's just going to keep going. You can't stop it without breaking some of the pipes. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw in half of you in there, half of you in there. You can see I've got a speed upgrade in there, which means it builds up the pressure faster. And I've also got the safety upgrade in here as well, which means hopefully it's not going to blow up. And now, as soon as this gets above, I think it's three. Ooh, you can see some capacitors already been made. If we look in here, we have 25 of those now, which is pretty flipping awesome. So next on the list, we could just grab like half of you, half of you, and the other half of the redstone. Go back up here. That stuff is probably going to sit there. Let's just uh, get rid of the filter. And hopefully everything should just pull through. It is a little bit slow, and all these things look like they're going to come through one at a time, which is a bit of a pain. But now you can, you want to make sure you kind of put them in in even numbers. So let's say we do 28 of each on this. That sounds like a nice, actually, yeah, that sounds fine. We'll do, we'll do 28 of, of each. Like that, and that. And if we put them in in even numbers, it means we're not going to be disappointed. We're not going to have to flip in, mess around with filtering at the end. So all that's done, we'll go back in here. We will whitelist the transistors again. We will throw in all of these guys up top. And things should be pretty much good to go. So we should just be able to do that. Wait for this thing to go through. And I'm thinking what I might do is because I don't have a an undone printed circuit board, one of these that hasn't been through here, an empty one, what I might do is just after this is finished, put in some uh, some compressed iron and some creeper, whatever it's called, some, uh, some creeper seed plant plastic. I might put that in there. That should still turn into the PCBs, but won't come out straight away. And then I'll just remove the filter and they should all come out. And then we can put them in here. Let them do its flipping really slow thing where it moves everything a little bit at a time. And then we should be pretty much good to go in terms of, of making all of the stuff for the A system, which is pretty flipping cool. So I think everything is in there now. It looks to be. Do we, uh, do we have everything? I can't see the compressed iron, but I'm just going to hope and assume that it is in there and that we're just waiting for this to build up now. So while that's doing that, let's eat some more stock. And uh, let's start making this ME controller and possibly making the ME disk drive as well. So is this doing anything for us? A little bit. Is the toast re bread ready again? Okay, there we go. We can just, we can just sort of loop through these. It's fine. Okay, we'll eat that. So we have the iron. The iron is fairly easy. We could probably do with some more iron, but we have the four iron we need. Nether quartz is down here. You can see we have quite a few stacks of it now, uh, which is pretty nice. We'll take four of you. We will take four of you. And what else did we need? We needed some redstone. We've got that. We can just head on over to the nearest crafting station. And we can go like that. Boom. So we got our four fluids crystals. We got our four iron. All we need now is that uh, advanced ME processor. And for that, we just need all this stuff here, which we just went through. So, let's make, say, I think we just need one of you and two of you, I think. I think that will turn into, is that one ingot or is that a few ingots? Hopefully, it's a few ingots. If that's one, that's a bit a bit unfair. Okay, that makes two ingots. That will make us two ingots. And, and we only need, how many do we need? We need three, don't we? Flip it neck. Okay, so we'll do that again. We'll put another one in there. And we'll put two of you in there. And that should get us four of these, which is quite nice. How are you doing? You doing good? We, uh, success? I can see the, the iron in there now. I can see also that we're rather low on pressure. But I can also see the transistors coming through, which is very, very nice. Good stuff, good stuff. I'm glad that works. I'm glad we've managed to automate that just a little bit more so we don't have to sit there and break it all the time. It's quite nice. So we've got those four now. We are just waiting on the uh, the printed circuit boards. We have the plastic sheets. All that is good to go. What do we need for the drive cage? The drive, this guy here, requires two basic PCBs, which are, well, basic processors, which are a lot easier to make. They're just normal um, expansion cards with a normal printed circuit board. We have a lot of plastic and a lot of redstone, so this should be fairly easy to make. Uh, again, it's just waiting for all these to finish. Are we done now? Is that it? Are we, uh, are we good to go? 27, I think we put 28 in, didn't we? So one more, or 29 maybe. <laughs> that, that works too. And now my plan is to, uh, to throw a bunch of... Uh, stuff in there. <laughs> we'll throw in a bunch of plastic and a bunch of you. Of course, we do still have a bunch of spare um, of all of these, so we probably could make more. But uh, but we'll do we'll stick with this for now. Let's take eight of you. Let's actually take ten. We'll do ten. Ten. There we go. Okay. Let's throw you into here and see if this works. If I put those in like that, I think they should 
turn into the PCBs in the middle there, and then just sit there a while until we remove the filter. I think that should work. Possibly. Maybe. Fingers crossed. Uh, ooh. You are being stopped on your way in. Why is that? Or, um, why is that? Exactly. Okay, so I did end up having to put all these in by themselves and just breaking the pressure chamber and stuff like that. But it seems to have worked quite nicely. You can see we have dropped quite a bit in pressure, but we do have quite a few of those uh, empty PCBs just floating around in there doing their thing. So let's let some of those guys out by removing the filter. We'll see apparently a 29 plastic coming back through because we did put in excess plastic in there. You've got to bear that in mind. And then we should see these PCBs probably come out one at a time now. Four more plastic coming through there, and then probably a bunch of PCBs, maybe? Possibly? This thing's pretty slow, I've got to say. I mean, I wish there was... Uh, actually, I said I wish there was a way. I could probably put uh, speed upgrades in here, and it would probably work a little bit faster. But it's not too bad, because there we go. We got ourselves ten empty PCBs, which is pretty nice. So, what we can do now is I'm going to take the speed upgrade out of here, and I'm going to grab the speed upgrades as the reward for this thing down here, because these are quite expensive. Claim reward. And what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to make this guy here faster, I think. So what we can do is we can put these in here. I've been storing random seeds in here and junk as well. But we can put those in there. And we do want to build up again. Let's put this in for now. And hopefully we can build up to uh, a decent amount of, uh, of pressure. Quite possibly pretty quickly. The speed upgrades do help with that. Let's put this back in. Uh, actually, they, they, these come out by, uh, by default whenever you move, remove a block, which is a bit of a pain. Because like, you want to break it to put something in, and then the flipping uh, upgrades pop out. And it's, it's, it's a bit of a hassle, but it's not too bad. Uh, we could always set up the kinetic compressor over here. That could work quite nicely as well. Because the kinetic compressor turns redstone flux into, uh, into compressed air as well, which is quite nice. So, hopefully, what we can do is, I think what I might do, actually, is just put one of these speed upgrades in each. Like, one in there, one in there, and one in here. Because if I put too many in this uh, assembly controller itself, what's going to happen is it's going to eat through the pressure. And then it's going to do one quite fast, but then the rest are just not going to happen because we don't have enough pressure buildup. So, what I think we're going to have to do is just even it out a little bit like that. Have one in each, and that should work through it a lot nicer. Let's put this item duct back in here so we can uh, do some more automatic stuff if we so desire. Do that. Not that. Throw you on there. And ignore control. And also, the good news is now we have our energetic infuser set up, which means we can use our flux infused pickaxe because we can charge it up, which is pretty flipping awesome. So, hopefully, this will be able to break things faster than the obsidian pick the way using can. And hopefully, we can do a bunch of cool stuff with that as well. So, let's try get this back because we don't lose the hopper. And hopefully, we should be getting pretty close to. Ah, we're still not that close. I wish we were closer to the to the four mark there, but uh, but basically what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm kind of just going to sit around for the next probably like half an hour or something ridiculous, while uh, while this thing slowly picks up, picks these guys up, moves them along, drops them onto here, picks them up, drops them into the chest. It possibly might be faster just for me to put them in a UV box and then go over there and put them in there, but I think I've got to do them all one at a time. So maybe maybe not. Yeah. Why is it so slow? Why you be so slow? It is getting there, <laughs> slowly, slowly but surely, it is getting there. Do we have a, a leadstone energy cell somewhere? We should have one of those, I think, lying around. We do. Let's let's try something here. Let's grab our kinetic inf uh, compressor, and let's go ahead and fill this guy up. I think you can do this using the thing here. Does that work? It does. It works quite nicely. Okay, okay, that works. Let's see if we can get it to work so that we just run the kinetic compressor off of this. If I was to grab, say, some leadstone energy conduits and and try do something like this, I think we have to have it facing this way, like that. And that's... Oh, no, it's the other way around, isn't it? Ah, okay. Uh, can we use the pneumatic wrench on this? We can? Nice. There we go. And then let's hook you up via conduits. Then let's make the front there an output. 
And that should start to spin up. Nice, nice. Okay, so that's working. I mean, I've no idea how long that's going to work for. Actually, it's going to work for not very long at all because that thing's now out of juice. Jeez, that, uh, that runs out pretty fast. That runs out pretty fast, guys. Uh, just a heads up. Let's pick this guy up. Let's see if we can charge it up a little bit more using the, uh, the energetic infuser over here. While it's doing that, let's eat some bread. Unfortunately, it is pretty limited to the fact that it can only take in 80 redstone flux per tick, which is a bit of a pain, but it's not too bad, I don't think. It would be nice if we had, say, like a hardened energy conduit, uh, energy cell, or a, um, a redstone one. But this should work for now. We are we are building up hopefully a bit faster with this thing in there. Uh, as you can see, this can go to much much higher pressures than uh, than the normal one can. But it does tear through the uh, the leadstone energy conduits there. I mean seriously, that that eats up a lot of juice right there. But we are getting there. We are getting to that four mark flipping egg. That takes a while. Uh, eventually what we'd like to have is just this guy be the main setup just be like only have a kinetic compressor and or maybe be like yeah i think that should be fine if we get like a, just a kinetic compressor with some speed upgrades in there so everything is running on power we don't have to worry about charcoal and stuff like that that would be quite nice are you gonna start anytime soon flipping heck this thing is slow oh look we're there we're there we are inside the range you should now soon be picking stuff up i think i have this the right way around let's take all this junk out I think this is the right way around, if I'm not mistaken. It's not the other way, is it? It might be. Is it like that? I don't think it is. Okay, so after a bit of time, I figured out we were missing this guy here, the assembly processor layers. I had it in one of the chests inside, and that's why things weren't working. But now, as you can see, it is going full steam ahead and doing all of its stuff. So, if we really quickly wanted to see just how fast we could push this, we are going to run out of these, um, like, of pressure pretty quickly doing this. But what we can do is we can add two more upgrades to that, and hopefully this will uh, make it run a bit faster. Uh, we're probably going to run out of pressure, but it's going to drop that in there. This one's going to pick itself up. As you can see, it's not incredibly fast still, even with three upgrades, but it's faster than this, which was just really, really slow. <laughs> See how fast it's moving? How slow it moves. It's it's a long process. So guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these and slowly move them back into this chest. And I'm going to just wait up until all of these are complete. And then we'll be back to finally get ourselves an AE system. So yeah, I'm going to go do that. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so it's just doing the last PCB here. It's just grabbing that last one. But we have the 10 that we threw in there. That last one's just because we had one to start with. And what we can do now is we can throw this into here with all of our transistors and most of our capacitors to make us a ton of PCBs. By a ton, of course, I mean 10, which is pretty flipping awesome. So with that, I think we should now have everything we need to set up our basic AE system. So first things first, we need this guy. Boom. Boom. Done. I'm not going to make them all into that because I know we do need two more of these for the ME controller itself. Otherwise, I would. But we've got that guy. Let's make this guy, which is two of these, one of these, three of these, and then I believe just three of these. Maybe? We've done that a little bit wrong. Is it the other way around? I think it's like this then, maybe. Like that. Boom. Logic 300 expansion card. And then something along the lines of this. I cooked up some silicon. It's just, uh, I just cooked up some uh, some of the Certus Quartz dust. Throw this guy in the middle. Throw the Blazing Pyrothium Flux Electron Blend either side. And we get ourselves our very first Emmy Advanced Processor, which was ridiculously hard to make. But we can now do this. And boom, we have an Emmy Controller. Nice. These next ones are a bit easier. We can grab two of you. We can get rid of these. We can then make these into basic processors, which are a lot easier to, to swallow. We'll just go with two of you, two of you, and boom. Boom. That gets us those two. And then all we got to do, grab ourselves some wood, make a chest. I think we have the two glass just sort of lying around in here, I thought. But we apparently it's in there. So we got that. Let's grab ourselves some wood, enough for a chest. And do something like so. And then, are we good? We need four iron. That's all we're missing. Four more iron and some food. <laughs> and we should be good to go. Finally. We, it will be so nice to have an AE system. You know, it is such a pain having to craft all this stuff by hand. Having to faff around with everything. But here we go. Boom. Boom. Emmy drive is done. Let's claim our reward for this thing. Hopefully, it's a good one. 
we get ourselves a 4K storage disc and a 4K fluid storage disc. I'm going to take the 4K normal storage disc because I don't know if I'm going to be storing fluids in the AE system just yet. So we'll take that. I'm not too sure I want to set this up. I think maybe over here somewhere. If we set it up over here, it would be nice for uh, doing stuff like that. But I think actually over here would make a bit more sense because it's near the um, near this guy. I might actually just do something like that. this for now just because it's easier. Just do something like that and like that. I would have liked maybe a pulverizer there, but this does make things a little bit easier. And then what we're going to need is we're going to need a crafting monitor. We're going to need this guy here. The crafting terminal is the last piece of the puzzle, which doesn't look too bad. We're going to need another one of these ME basic processors. But again, we kind of have everything we need for that now. So let's make another one of you. Let's turn that into one of you. And then we should be good to go. We're going to need some of this stuff. That's going to allow us to make this um, crafting. Oh, we want a different one. We want a crafting terminal. We want this guy here. So that's going to allow us to make that. And then we're going to need this guy, which requires one of these, which is going to require another one of these, which is going to require another one of those. Ah, geez, you know, it's expensive. <laughs> the ME stuff's expensive. We'll do this, we'll do that, and we'll do this. That gets us another one. And that should be the last basic circuit we have to make today, I think. No promises. Let's go ahead. And do we have the stuff? We need some fluix dust, which means we need to pulverize nether quartz, which is not too big of a deal. We should be able to pull that off because I think we have more nether quartz in here. Look at this. I've been sifting through stacks and stacks of the stuff. We'll throw you into there. We've got ourselves almost enough crushed cobalt and crushed iodite to make ingots of both of those, which is quite nice. Let's take a few of these. We don't want to sift through those. Nether quartz dust is always fun to have. And this should be the last thing, I think, maybe, that we need. So we'll go with some of you. Uh, what are we missing? So just quartz dust. Throw that together in there. Make a few of those because we're going to need quite a bit. And then throw that with this guy. Boom. My inventory is filling up very fast. Hopefully it'll empty very fast as well in a second. So boom. No, what are we missing? Is it? Uh, we've got the processor. Nether quartz itself. We're missing. Let's get rid of some random junk. The uh, the cinnabar there, by the way, that I got. I got that from uh, pulverizing the uh, redstone ore that we had. Uh, like we had like 48 just redstone ore that was just sitting around that could be turned into uh, six redstone a piece. So I decided to go through and, uh, and pulverize all that. But boom, we have that done. And then boom again, maybe? Oh, do we need this? Which is going to require oh, just a little tiny bit more glass. Jeez. We need... We're so close. We're so close. And yet so far away. Let's grab a little bit more sand. Let's get rid of this dirt for now. I know dirt's quite precious, but we can we can give it up for our AE system. Let's pull... Let's smell up two more pieces of glass. Actually, I think we're going to need a few more than that, but still. Well, we'll start cooking up some glass. Do we have any just lying about? It doesn't look like we do sad face but that's fine we can wait we've waited this long we've waited 24 episodes guys we can wait a few more seconds to get ourselves some sand and then i think we're good to go we're going to need three more for that so we're going to need this guy and then three more after that so we can make you and then we can make we can almost make this we just need three glass so that's one why our furnace is so slow <laughs> I so badly want a redstone furnace. I can't believe that's the last thing we've made. Like, one of the last machines from from thermal expansion is the redstone furnace. I mean, to be honest, we don't really need it. Uh, we can wait with the slab furnace, but it would be so nice to be able to smelt just that little bit faster. And there we go. And I think we even need two more for the final bit. But we can make this guy. And then, finally, we have almost everything we need. Let's grab uh, a crafting table. Let's get rid of some of this slag. And let's grab this last piece of glass when it gets ready. And we should be good to go. Thank you. And thank you. Nice. We have ourselves an ME crafting terminal. Good stuff. Good stuff. We can throw this over here on top of this guy. We can throw our disc in there. And then, oh my gosh, the space. Look at this. We can just, oh my gosh. We can just empty all of this out if we really wanted to get rid of this stuff. And just start dumping it all into our system. Let's go empty some chests out, shall we? It's so nice to have the space. We can just do this. 
run back over here. How are we doing for space on our storage disk? Almost halfway done on the types, like... Trees, probably not the best idea. We've probably just, like, filled that up on trees. We have. Okay, let's take some trees out. We don't want saplings in there. We don't. You're taking up far too many types. You are You are bad. We don't want types. We want to throw in some uh, some stuff that we have a lot of, like mm, wood. I'm not really feeling. We're not feeling wood because we have, although we have a lot of it, we don't really need, like, that much space for it. Those seem like a good idea. And cobblestone, not really feeling it. We have barrels full of the stuff. And I'm thinking ingots, maybe, as well. Ingots would be a good idea. So, what I think I'm going to do, guys, is now that we have this stuff, we have uh, all of the space and all of the things, which is pretty flippin' awesome. This would probably be a good idea to throw in as well. We have all of the space. We have a, a nice 4K storage disk, which is almost full on types. What we... I mean, it's stuff like this. We shouldn't have the wrench in there, or this, or this, or this. <laughs> These little things that we should have on us. I got a little bit overexcited there. This guy, and you... But we have all this space. What I'm probably going to do between this episode and next is make us a bunch of um, a bunch of our storage disks, hopefully as well. So we'll throw all you in here. I think I might have to. I might just get rid of these barrels entirely and put something else here, which would be quite nice. Uh, how are we doing now? We've now got 57 types and still only halfway through. So we'll grab like all of you, all of our dust, all of our nether quartz. Might as well grab the plastic sheets. We can just throw everything in there. All of this stuff. In one nice little convenient space. I think this thing is pretty much empty by this point. Uh, I think I'm going to keep the um, the water bottles in a barrel. Simply for the fact that they're, they're, they're nice and convenient to grab over there. And then we can just craft and throw stuff back. But with that, guys, we are pretty much pretty much done. So, yeah, I'm going to, between episodes, I will probably grab a, a few more storage disks. They do require a, uh, a few more of those PCBs to be made and all that good stuff. But hopefully next episode, we should have maybe a few more 1K storage disks so we can throw in stuff like the saplings and, and not worry too much about space. But, uh, yeah, we have an A system. No more frantically running around all that all them flipping chests over there. We could just be like, okay, I want to make this guy here. And then we could just shift left click. And if we had the stuff, it would bring it in, which is pretty flipping awesome. We could probably make another another ME controller at this point, which is kind of cool as well. Did we end up um, completing the quest for the ME stuff? Did we even hand that in? We did, yeah, okay, that's good. So we're actually almost there, guys. We're halfway through the technological revolution. Uh, under pressure, all we need to do is make another kinetic compressor, which we've already done, and I'm not even sure what the blueprint for success is. We've kind of done, we kind of bypassed all this stuff. So we've kind of done the first two. Technological revolution, all we got to do now is, uh, is set up a fruit picker, we need to set up a mob grinding system with some auto enchantments and, and disenchantments. And then it looks like we have a few more animal farming things to do down there, along with some liquids. And then after that, guys, we can start getting back to the moon. We can head on back. We are very close, I think, actually, to the end here. We've got quite a lot of stuff. We've finally got some A, so we are going to do some automation. I would like to set up a legit um, form of water because I have talked to uh, the mob dev uh, the mob, the uh, the developer of this mod pack, and he said that the etching acid is a glitch, but unfortunately he can't fix it. It's on the pneumatic craft side. Uh, he doesn't have the power to change that to fix that glitch. So that is going to be permanent by the looks of things. So I would like to set up a, 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 a like a legitimate source of infinite water, which I think I'm going to do with a second tree farm. But, uh, but yeah, with that guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.